So following the recent relative success of my Essential Mythic Plus Week Horrors video, I thought I would bring out a follow up video looking at a different aspect of the game. The aspect that I chose to focus on for today's video was leveling because a lot of people that I talk to are leveling alts at the minute because we're at that stage of the content patch. So I thought I'd share with you four weak auras that I like to use when I am leveling all of my alts. Now just before we dive into it, unlike in my previous videos on weak auras, where I specify that all of the weak auras have been made by somebody else and therefore I'm giving them full credit and I wouldn't probably be able to help if you have any issues, three of the four we're going to talk about today I did make myself, so if you do have any issues feel free to leave an ish your comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you on it. But to start off I think we'll get the one that I didn't make out of the way first. So first up, we're going to have what you see at the top of my screen here, which is a weak aura to replace the experience bar that a lot of classic UIs have. Now, this weak aura, in my opinion, is absolutely fantastic. While a lot of the base functionality of the experience bar aspect of the weak aura is baked into the default UI and pretty much any other UI you may be using, some of the additional functionalities are absolutely fantastic. Most notably going to be the amount of rested experience that you can see easily at a glance as well as your completed quest experience but also my personal favorite aspects of this week aura is the experience and hour tracker that is displayed very prominently below the experience bar itself i find this very useful for when i am experimenting with the speed of leveling through different methods and i just find this particularly engaging and something that helps me to not get burnt out when I'm trying to put in the long hours to get my character up to max level. Now next up we have a little bit of a niche one but it is one that I think is incredibly helpful and that is going to be my Dark Moon Fair Firewater Tracker. Now the Dark Moon Firewater is an item that you can get when the Dark Moon Fair is up that gives a one hour buff that improves your gathering speed for any gathering profession in any of the expansion's content. This is absolutely fantastic when leveling because if anyone didn't know, you gain a ludicrous amount of experience from gathering nodes. Every character I level has both mining and herbalism to make an absolutely ludicrous amount of experience while I am doing anything else. Sometimes I'm just going to be changing my route slightly when questing to get extra nodes or sometimes I will just simply flat out not bother with questing, go and gather to make my experience gains as well as some pretty hefty gold gains while leveling, while I'm just sat in a queue to do battlegrounds and or dungeons. Now, this Diamond Firewater Week Aura is simply going to track the duration of the buff that is on you. However, when the buff gets to sub five minutes, the icon at the bottom of the bar will also start to flash and is clickable. So if you have another Firewater in your bag, Clicking on the flashing weak aura will renew the duration on your buff. Now next up we have the ones that I absolutely could not level a character without. I have my little dungeon utility bar that I have named it of four weak auras that I currently got situated in the lower portion in the center of my screen. Now this little collection of weak auras is four different clickable buttons that each have a unique function. Firstly, we have the first button that will queue you for a battleground with one click. It will use the role that you last had assigned in your battleground UI by default in the menu. So if your last battleground you did as a DPS, but you queued as either, let's say you queued as DPS or healer, you will queue once again as DPS or healer. Similarly, you have next to it the PVE queue for dungeon button which is going to do much the same as the PvP button, but queue you for a random dungeon. If you are at a particular stage of chromie time, you will be queued for a dungeon of that expansion that you are using chromie time for. If you are in Shadowlands, then you will queue for a normal Shadowlands dungeon. Or if you have surpassed level 60 and got yourself to a place where you are eligible to do heroics, it will also queue you for heroics by default at that point. The third button in the list is simply a button to teleport you in and out of a dungeon that you are in without leaving the group. This can be very helpful in a lot of dungeons while leveling because a lot of these dungeons have quests that you get at the start of the dungeon 
You then proceed through the dungeon and complete your quest, and have to return to the start to hand it in. If you were to walk manually back out from the throughout the entirety of the dungeon, this can actually be incredibly time consuming. By using this button, one click teleports you out, click it again, teleports you back in, and within two clicks and the length of two loading screens, you are back at the start of the dungeon. And lastly, we have the leave button. Now, whatever content you are in, this is simply going to leave the party. So with this button, if you find yourself in a situation where you just don't want to take part anymore, or if you just need to leave the party because the dungeon's ended and you want to return to what you're doing, rather than any of the other methods of right clicking on you and leave instance group or right clicking on the eye on your mini map or anything like that, you just click this button and you are immediately free from your restraint of being in a group. Now, these buttons are all great for quality of life, but in terms of the dungeon queue button, it actually has a pretty good functionality. In my experience, when I am leveling as a DPS and want to queue as DPS, I can be met with some reasonably long queue timers. It's not often that I queue as DPS, but when I do, this can be very frustrating for me. Now, whilst you aren't going to be able to skip the queue for your first dungeon, there is a good chance with this button that you may be able to skip the one afterwards if you were to spam. Now, the reason this is the case is because if you cl click this button while staying in an instance group, it will attempt to re-queue your entire instanced group meaning you may well keep your tank and healer if you can queue quick enough that you get it up on their screen before they leave the group. Now, in my experience, a lot of people will simply just do another dungeon because of the fact the first one went reasonably smoothly and they have no reason to leave. But by default, a lot of tanks and healers just simply leave party and then re-queue. By doing this, you may be able to get them to stick around and get you through the queue a little faster, which is honestly a absolute godsend when leveling as a DPS. Now, last up, we have my clickable speed utility button wheel that I keep at the lower right corner of my screen. Now, most of this clickable functionality is going to be for use of for people who don't like to keybind their buttons, or if like me, only when playing alts that you play so very infrequently that you're not sure where your keybinds are, or you can't even be bothered to bind them because you only go back and you do trivial content. For example, you can see me here using my monk to farm an old raid, and I can't be bothered to try and remember where all of my different speed enhancing buttons are when trying to go through all this old content. Similarly, if you are leveling, which of course is the focus of this, and you find yourself, let's say, in a cave and you need to get back out of it as quickly as possible and you can't mount because you're indoors, then you may find some use for it also. Now, what it does is it gives a clickable button that you can use for any speed increase that is available to you for your class and also for some utility items. So I have put in pretty much every speed boosting ability that I could think of for all of the classes, as well as covenant abilities and also the heirloom necklace and swiftness potions. All of these are included in the weak aura, but will only display when they are available for use. So, i.e. if the weak aura is on your screen, you can click it and it will use the ability of which the icon is representing. Now, this is very helpful for my opinion, especially when leveling, because the added bonus when you have slow bounce speed, you only want to go short distances, or you're inside a cave, or maybe you're in an instance run and you just want to be able to keep up with those classes that have got a little bit more speed innately, then you will be able to use buttons that if you're anything like me, you don't want to keybind to its own separate key, such as like a swiftness potion or the heirloom necklace. Simply click on the weak aura and you will have the effect enabled. Now, if you some of you eagle-eyed people may have noticed that when on my monk, it doesn't seem to be fu functioning 100%, and that is simply because of the limitations of what Blizzard allow. When you are in combat, it doesn't always refresh correctly. The buttons that are present providing that the ability is indeed off cooldown when this occurs, will still work, but the weak auras will not refresh 100% in combat most of the time. This is just a simply a limitation of what is actually achievable with the weak auras thanks to Blizzard's restrictions, but I assure you the weak aura is working as best as it can. Now that's going to about wrap it up for me today, I do believe, guys, but I do hope that you enjoyed the video. The links to all of these weak auras will be in the description below, and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.
Thank you.